Hey everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. Yes. We are live on location. We are at Y for Life. We are, uh, we're gonna march tomorrow. We are gonna march like soldiers so, off to war. No, 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 no. It's life week, and so um, let's talk. Let's talk life. Um, it's it's loud. I know the kids are rolling in. It's it's actually a lot of fun. Um, it's pretty awesome, actually. See all these kids here, all these Lutheran kids. Why are we having a march for life? They overturned Roe v. Wade. Ro v. Wade. I don't know. I mean, that's a little. I mean, it's not like the the fight, and I hate to say fight because it's not a fight, it's not but a fight. it's a fight. But it's not a fight. Um, but it's not like it's over, right? I don't know. This is weird. Um, and I was asking myself the very same thing. A lot of people were asking me this question this week. Uh, why, why would you go all the way to D.C. when, federally speaking, uh, Roe got overturned? Right. And, and so, I mean, whether or not you want to call it a fight is sort of actually the thing. When, when we talk about battle, when we talk about war, as Christians, it's not us against other people. It's, in fact, Christ against sin, Christ against death, Christ against the devil. And that war is, that war is done. It is done. When, when we talk about the, this, this war then, when it comes to issues of, of, of sin, of death, of, of even great magnitude and importance, if you're going to leave out Jesus, there's a lot left to fight about. But if Christ is yelling from the cross, it is finished both for the sinners and the sinned against. You have a different kind of thing happening. No, you certainly do. Um, and, and yet we do live in this temporal world where we do have laws and rules within the, the country, laws and rules within your state. So, I don't know, this is going to be, I don't know, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see uh, uh, how the how the people here, the organizers, are, are going to be framing this for the children. Because So what does this now mean? Because for the last how many years? 40 years? I can't even, I don't even know. People have been coming here with this March for Life. Why do you even march to begin with? Does it begin and end with the march? I, I don't think it does. I think I think there's much more to it. Um, but I think when kids and when youth come to things like this, uh, it's not just to, to deal with the experience or, or have the experience, although that's good and important. And we don't view it as like, hey, look, we, we ticked off our, our good works for marching for the unborn, and, and that, that did something. No, I, I think it's, it's actually, hey, let's, let's become part of this. Uh, so that we can speak for the things of life, hustle. We can speak for the things of life um, in and through all of our vocations. Because I, I think that's where children and kids and youth and even adults need to learn a little bit better too. How to appropriately speak for life and towards life uh, in their daily vocations and not just on this special day in January in, in D.C. So this is not sort of then the... the be all end all but, no. but rather this is simply framing a conversation going forward because you have to go home after this right yes you do it's it's like any conference that you ever go to you're up on the on the high mountain and you get all pumped up about it and then you go home and you're back to the real world well if these things of life are that vitally important that mm -hmm. our lord has given to us um then yeah they should go into your daily life um, they should go into the, the, the state stuff and the local stuff and your congregation and your family and to your neighbors. And how is that actually going to look? And it's going to look a little bit different depending on what your vocation is. If you are a, a politician, then you're going to approach it in the, the vocation of politician. And, and As you should. Right. Even as a citizen, to, to vote when, when you're given the opportunity. If you're a kid and you can't vote yet, you get to love your neighbor. I, I think it's important to sort of recognize you have a neighbor to love. And, and that neighbor happens to be a sinner that Jesus died for. When, when we hold on to this idea that that even when we can't vote yet, even when the voting has already been done in a lot of ways, what you have is an opportunity then to, to actually speak to somebody as if Jesus died for them. There, there's something then to offer in, in mercy and in love. This is not marching to prove a point, but, but rather simply, again, we, we get to, to, to be bearers of hope. Right, right. Uh, uh. I think a lot of people uh, in these marches, I think a lot of marches altogether, it's, it is this, this, this thought process of we're marching, we're doing this militant we're thing. Winning. And, yeah, we're winning, we look at all the numbers that we had and, and all of this. I think the march for life, the understanding of this is, is yes, there's certainly temporal things that we're trying to, to over, overturn. And, and in a certain way, in a federal way, we've done that now. But that's going to change in, like you said, it's going to change in your vocations. It also changes whatever state you live in. And that's the 
weird and strange and special thing about America is, right. is uh, somebody in Colorado like me, nothing changed when Roe got overturned. Mm-hmm. Colorado's is still the same way, but if you live in Montana, everything's different. Right. And, and so it's getting loud here. Uh, we still got a lot to do. Um, but but as we're kind of wrapping things up then, um, your vocation doesn't change depending on the law. Your vocation right. doesn't change depending on the state you live in. Love your neighbor and receive mercy from Christ, um, but not in that order, I guess. Right. No, exactly. Right. Receive mercy, and then through that mercy, love your neighbor. And if you don't know exactly what that looks like in regard to the things of life, uh, talk to your pastor and, and say, okay, hey, uh, here I am sitting in, in, in wherever. Um, how am I, as a 16-year-old youth who loves these things of, of life, um, how can I actually affect change and, and be good for my neighbor? How can I serve my neighbor? Yeah. Ask your pastor, ask your parents, ask your teachers. Absolutely. Get involved. All right. Thanks, kids.